beautiful promise of Almighty God. If you have your Bibles, I would love for you to turn to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, and I have been in a series for, I believe this is going to be my fourth or my fifth message that I have preached from this passage of Scripture, uh, talking about that it's my responsibility uh, and your responsibility uh, to really take uh, full responsibility uh, of keeping our heart uh, and guarding our heart uh, and protecting our heart uh, because out of the heart, uh, we understand, comes all of the issues uh, of life. Uh, I didn't find out until just a few moments ago uh, that Sister Patty's one of her passions uh, and one of her things that she loves so much about the medical world uh, is the heart. Uh, And uh, she has done a lot of studying on the heart. Uh, And she told me something that was very interesting right before church. Uh, Not only does the heart uh, provide circulation for your whole body, uh, but the heart in itself has its own circulation you see the heart is such a vital part of our lives it isn't because people want to backslide it isn't because people want to get cold spiritually it isn't really because people do not want to serve Jesus Christ when people get cold in their relationship with the master There's a heart issue. There's a heart problem. Because you see, his word says that he is not willing that any would perish. But it goes on to say that all would come unto the knowledge of truth. See, it's God's will for you to speak in tongues. It's God's will for you to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's God's will for you to be baptized in Jesus' name. Because there is no other way of being baptized. And I don't mean this ugly and offensive, but if you've been baptized any other way, I can prove to you scripturally that the only way to be baptized is in the name of of Jesus. There was four accounts in the Word of God where they were baptized. In all four accounts, they were baptized in the name. Why wouldn't you want the name of Jesus applied to your life? But pastor, he said, go and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You're right, but what's the name? The name is Jesus. And that's why we go down into that watery grave. Uh, Proverbs chapter 4, let's look at verse uh, 23. Uh, It says, keep thy heart with what? Keep thy heart with what? For out of it, keep thy heart, and for out of it, so we've got to understand, It's our responsibility to keep this heart, right? It's not your neighbor's. It's not your mate. It's our responsibility, correct, to keep our heart. Uh, Then uh, let's look at verse 24. For put away from thee a what? And a perverse lips, right? Put far from thee. Now look at the next verse, verse 25. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thy eyelids look straight before thee. Verse 26. Ponder the path of what? And let all and let all thy ways be established. Would you lay your Bibles down? I really believe that God wants to do something today. You see, it is God's will to touch us in a supernatural way. It is God's will to touch your heart today. It is God's will to do the impossible 
in your life today. I want you one more time to reach over and grab that neighbor by the hand right now. And I want you to pray for that hand that you're holding this very moment. uh, That in the next few moments uh, that God would come into their rescue. And that God would come to their aid. uh, And that God would meet the need of those that are beside you. Would you raise that hand right now? Uh, Heavenly Father, I come to you. uh, And God, I'm asking you right now uh, that Lord you would come down. uh, And that God you would minister in this house. uh, That you would move in this place. Uh, God, I pray for a sensitivity. Uh, I pray for an openness. Uh, God, I pray for a divine revelation. Uh, I'm asking you right now, oh God, uh, minister in this house. uh, And move in this place. Uh, Touch every woman. uh, Touch every man. uh, Touch every boy and every girl in this house. Uh, God, we need a divine touching from you. Uh, In Jesus' name we pray and everybody say you may be seated Proverbs 4 uh, and 26 says uh, ponder uh, the path uh, of thy feet uh, and let all thy ways uh, be established Uh, ponder uh, the path Uh, I would dare say that the majority of us uh, wake up any given day uh, and start our daily activities uh, with a routine uh, and with a rut uh, that you and I have formed uh, on a daily basis. Uh, But the Bible instructs us here uh, that we are to ponder uh, the path uh, of our feet. Uh, I would be clear to say probably uh, that very many of us uh, really take time uh, and lay out the direction uh, that we are are going to go throughout uh, that day. Uh, where your feet trod uh, will cause uh, a heart uh, response. Don't just turn your feet loose uh, to go anywhere uh, they want uh, to go. Uh, the scripture says uh, to ponder them. Uh, ponder means uh, to choose well. Don't Make rash decisions. Use wisdom in choosing the path of your life. I have been a preacher for a long, long time time. Uh, I have been in this thing all uh, of my life. Uh, I have seen many people uh, make many bad choices uh, and many bad decisions. uh, And I have watched people uh, allow their feet to lead them uh, down very treacherous paths uh, because uh, they made a decision uh, with being upset. Uh, They made a decision uh, in the heat of anger. Uh, They made a decision uh, when their emotions uh, were on an all time high. Uh, But the Bible instructs us to ponder. Uh, In other words, choose uh, well. Uh, Don't make rash decisions. Uh, Use wisdom uh, in choosing uh, the path uh, of your life. Uh, I have made uh, decisions uh, in my life and no doubt you have made decisions in your life that you really did not spend much time in thought nor did you spend much time in prayer there are many of us that are paying on credit cards today because we didn't stop and ponder the consequences of purchasing what we were getting ready to purchase our I saw it and our heart desired it and instead of planning out and making a strategy and how can I get this how can I get this into my possession without throwing me into a mess many of us deal with the consequences at a later time before you buy a house And before you buy a car, and before you plunge yourself into debt for five or 30 years, you need to stop and you need to ponder it. Seek advice 
follow that advice. It doesn't do much good to get advice if you're not going to follow that advice. I realize in pastoring, Angie and I have come to the collusion that many people don't come to us for our advice. They come to us so that we will just appease them. He said, remove thy feet from evil. Be careful whom you walk with. I, I'm going to let it get a little quiet in here, okay? Be careful who you walk with. Amos chapter 3 and verse 3 says, Can two walk together except they be and agree? You see... The problem with today's world is uh, that, folks, uh, we are not really taking time uh, to understand uh, where we are walking. Uh, we are not realizing uh, that birds of the feather uh, flock together. Uh, we don't understand uh, that normally uh, if you're a critical person, uh, you're hanging around uh, critical people. If you're a loving person, uh, you will be attracted uh, to loving people. Uh, if you're a negative individual, uh, you'll be attracted uh, to negative people. Uh, you've got to understand uh, that you are more known than you realize you are. I don't really have to stop uh, and carry on a conversation with somebody uh, for a long length of time uh, to know what kind of person they are. All I have to be is an observant person. All I have to do uh, is watch who they run with. Watch who they associate with. Watch who they eat with. Uh, watch uh, who they hang out with uh, because that tells a lot uh, about a person. Uh, remember the steps of Abraham uh, and remember the steps of Lot. Uh, on one eventful day when Abraham uh, suggested to Lot uh, that their parties and their, their homes uh, and their countrymen and, and all of their workers uh, had gotten too large to dwell in the same pastures. Abraham looked at Lot and said, it's time for us to separate. It's time for us to go our ways. In Genesis chapter 13 records their decisions. I want you to look at the decisions that Abraham made. And I want you to evaluate the decision that Lot made. I want you to see where Abraham's feet took him. And I want you to stop. And I want you to look at where Lot's feet took him. Lot pitched his tent. And in Genesis 13, 12, Abraham removed his tent. In Genesis 13 and 18, uh, there in a nutshell uh, is the difference uh, between Abraham uh, and Lot. Uh, we find that Lot's feet uh, took him uh, towards sin, uh, into shame, uh, into iniquity, uh, into perverseness, uh, into the works of the flesh. Uh, that's the way Lot's feet took him. Uh, but we find that Abraham uh, said, look, I'm going to go a total uh, different direction. Uh, I'm going to go in a total uh, different uh, way. Uh, and we find that Abraham's feet uh, took him uh, a long ways uh, away. Uh, you've got to stop uh, and you've got to ask yourself a question this morning. Uh, where are my feet uh, taking me? Because where your feet takes you affects the heart. Do you have guidelines on your feet? Are your feet submitted? Are your feet under God's word? Or have you put God's word 
as your feet to, to lead you and to guide you? Uh, or do you just allow them to go any Oh, way. Uh, the Bible also says, uh, keep your ears right. Uh, it's only wise to make sure uh, that you get your ears on. Uh, Proverbs chapter 5 tells us uh, that my son attend uh, to my wisdom uh, and bow thine ears uh, to uh, my understanding. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the ears hear things uh, at times that they probably should not hear. They may hear correctly uh, what was said, uh, but there are times uh, when we must put earplugs uh, in our ears uh, and go on uh, and serve uh, God Almighty. Uh, we must understand uh, that it is my responsibility uh, and it is your responsibility uh, to keep uh, the heart. Uh, for out of the heart uh, comes the issues uh, of life. Uh, and the Bible uh, has well laid out for us uh, that our eyes see uh, what our hearts want. Uh, we are well understood uh, that if we long for it long enough, uh, if we stare at it long enough, uh, our heart uh, is going uh, to desire it. Uh, we have to be careful uh, what our eyes uh, are seeing. Uh, it's important uh, that we have blinders uh, on our eyes. Uh, it's very very, very important uh, that you and I understand, folks, uh, not everywhere uh, that our feet want to go is the right place to go. As children of God, or as people that is trying to get in right relationship with him. Uh, there are things that are not pure. Uh, there are things that are not wholesome. Uh, there are things that are not holy. Uh, the Bible says uh, he is coming back for a holy, righteous people. It is, behooves you and I that if you and I would be the individual uh, that is truly uh, guarding uh, our hearts. Uh, but not only do we need to guard our hearts uh, and guard our eyes uh, and guard our tongue, uh, we've got to understand that, folks, uh, we've got to guard our ears and our feet uh, because every one of these uh, play a vital role uh, in our heart. You don't just wake up up inside the backslide. Either your feet took you somewhere that they should not have. Either you listened to something uh, you should not have listened to, uh, or either you saw something uh, that you got in covenant with uh, and the heart began to lust after it. Uh, you must understand uh, that it is not the pastor's job uh, to keep your heart. Uh, it is your heart. Uh, when everyone else is gone uh, and no one else is around, uh, you alone uh, are responsible uh, for your heart. Uh, for the Bible says, uh, out of the heart uh, comes the issues uh, of life. Uh, the issues of life come uh, from our eyes, uh, from our tongue, right? From our ears, right? From our feet. It's because we don't allow those things to be in right sync with God. Because the moment, the moment that you and I get crossways, what begins to happen? Bitterness begins to get in our hearts. The moment that somebody says something about us uh, that we don't like, uh, it's the moment uh, automatically uh, that bitterness uh, and, and, and envy and, and strife uh, and, and rebellion uh, begins to set in. Uh, I'm going to tell this church something uh, that you better hear loud and you better hear clear. Uh, that you better get out of you uh, the spirit of rebellion. That's why I tell you that if you can't have me as your pastor and you can't submit to my leadership and to my preaching and to my direction, then it would behoove you to find a different church. Because rebellion is as sin as witchcraft. 
And rebellion is going to destroy us. You must understand that the enemy will do everything and everything that he can to get your heart affected. Do you understand that? He's after your heart. He's after you to have a sick heart. He wants you to have a heart attack spiritually because he understands the chances of your survival is very slim. And if you do come back from the heart attack, you're going to constantly be under doctor care. You're going to have to take medicine. You're going to have to watch what you're doing uh, because the heart was damaged and when the heart gets damaged you have to understand that you are more open to the sins of the flesh you and I have got to get wise in this last day you and I have got to understand that there is an enemy seeking whom he may devour. There is an enemy that is after you. Does anybody believe that he's after you? Has he knocked on anybody's door this week? Yeah. Because he wants your mission to be the same as his mission. He wants you to be destroyed. He wants you to be ruined. Uh, he don't want you to have joy and peace and happiness uh, and goodness. Uh, he don't want those things in your life. Uh, he wants to bring misery and harm. Uh, that's why a little word that is spoken, right? Taken out of the wrong context, right? Can be very damaging. Can be very hurtful. Can be very woundful at times into our heart and into our lives. Walking in on a situation that you may not really understand the whole thing can be very damaging to the eyes. That's why you and I have to understand, folks, where are our feet leading us? Where are our feet guiding? What are we allowing to come inside of me? It's like I've said many times, if you sit there and allow somebody to gossip, you are just as bad as the gossiper. Because I'm going to tell you, trash in is trash out. You can't contain, if, if I was to come up to you, Marlon, and say, hey, I got to tell you, you can't tell me what just happened. She can't wait for me to get it out of my mouth so she can call her next closest buddy and tell them because it's in our dna it's in us we want to share what we know because it makes us feel like we're important we have hurt many people with a tongue that has shed innocent blood we have wounded many individuals and have given many individuals heart attacks because we wasn't wise to understand that out of our heart comes the issues of life. Out of this heart is going to determine whether I will live for God or whether I will not live for God. The thing that you and I have got to get in our relationship with God, that what somebody says and what somebody does and what somebody's action is cannot affect my heart. You see, it's like I tell you, you don't call this Brother Manning's church. You don't refer to this as Brother Manning's church because this isn't my church. Because I didn't die for this church. It's God's church. And folks, the thing that we have got to get inside of us is the enemy is after our heart. And he's a sly old fox. And he will do it in ways in ways that you don't even think would happen. But before you know it, bitterness and resentment and rebelliousness will be in your heart. 
And you've got to stop and say, where in the world did I allow these things to get in my heart? When I went through my pain and when I went through my agony in St. Louis and when my own father and mother turned on me and everyone that I was acquainted with had nothing to do with me, when I found myself all alone because my marriage was on the rocks, I didn't even know if it was going to stay together. I had to make up in my mind that I had to protect my heart because I understand that out of my heart comes the issues of life we've all been hurt we've all had people wound us we have all had people uh, that have abused us uh, but folks you better hear this preacher uh, you better get a hold of your heart uh, and you better guard that heart uh, with everything that you have uh, and you better make up in my, your mind uh, it is my responsibility uh, to keep this heart with all diligence I can't I can't control what everybody's going to say. I can't control where everybody's going to go. I can't control what everybody's going to do. But I can control this. My job is to control my heart. My job is to make sure I have a healthy heart. Several months ago, Rebecca, I had to make a decision to stop eating fast food. Because I want to make sure that I have a healthy heart. I had to make some changes and I'm still in the process of trying to pull sugar out of my life. Oh, that is a killer right there. But I understand if I keep on the course that I'm on, it's not going to be good for my health. As much as I'm concerned about my health, I'm so much more concerned about my spirit. In the last few weeks, I've had to make some major changes some major decisions I've had to change some things I've had to go in some different directions I've had to do some things different because I've got to guard this heart at all cost I've got to be the one that makes up in my mind this heart's not for sale I'm the one that's got to decide that Tommy I'm not going to give you the power to hurt me I've got to make up in my mind. Let them get in their little group, but they're not going to affect my heart because my heart is my responsibility. You see, we put a lot of emphasis on speaking in tongues, which I believe we should. We put a lot of emphasis on being baptized in Jesus' name which I believe that we should because we are a church that teaches the Word of God. Uh, I tell people when they come here, uh, now I am not about a religion. Uh, I do not belong to a certain religion, uh, but I do preach the Word of God. Now in my back pocket, I hold a license to the United Pentecostal Church International. The United Pentecostal Church International is not a church association it's a minister association but the United Pentecostal Church International is not going to get my soul to heaven the only thing that's going to get my soul to heaven is what this book says and folks it's time we put our heart in that book and we understand that the issues of life come from this book and everything everything that I faced everything that I go up against everything that knocks on my heart 
I can find it in this book. But if this word is not applied into my life, you can go to church, hear me. You can go to church on Sunday morning, on Sunday night, on Wednesday night, and still go to hell. Because church can't save you. Signing a row in a church and putting your name on that church row cannot save you. The only thing that can save you is a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I don't know why they all don't preach that. I don't know why they all don't teach that. But I can show you it in the Word of God. It's about this Word. It's about guarding this heart with this Word. Why does pastor say almost every service, you've got to be reading your word every day. You've got to be praying every day. It's got to be an everyday life. Because folks, if you don't realize, we are living in very peculiar days. We're living in a very challenging we're living under unusual circumstances. We're living in a day today that calls wrong right and right wrong. We're living in a day today where they want to take Merry Christmas out of our statements and say Happy Holiday. Thank God we got a president that will declare Merry Christmas loud and clear. Because it is about Merry Christmas. It's not about a happy holiday. They want to get so politically correct on everything else except for in their relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, there is only one way. And the Bible spells it out very loud and very clear. You don't have to second guess how you have to be saved. You don't have to second guess how you get in relationship with God. You don't have to second guess how you get in covenant with Him. It's spelled out as clear and clear can be in the Word of God. Our problem is uh, we don't want to take the Word for face value. Uh, we don't want the Word to be our lamp unto our feet uh, and our light unto our past. Uh, and that's why uh, we find ourselves uh, going down bad roads. Uh, that's why we find ourselves uh, heading down wrong pathways. Uh, it's because we refuse to allow the Word to be the light. As we stand today, it's important that you and I understand from Proverbs that it is our responsibility to search our heart and to diligently look after it. It's not an option. It's a command. It's a command from God just like the Ten Commandments were. It's your responsibility to keep your heart. What I want to tell you, because a lot of churches won't tell you, that you alone are going to be responsible when you stand before the Maker. You alone are going to give an account of your life. I don't want to hurt your feelings, but good people are going to be in hell. And bad people are going to be in heaven. Because you see, heaven wasn't made for good people. I, I, I know what those television evangelists tell you, but they're wrong. Heaven wasn't made for good people. Heaven was made for people that have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Heaven was created for you and I who were sinful, but now we're covered in the blood. 
You see, hell's going to have a lot of good people. And heaven's going to have a lot of bad people. But those bad people that are going to be in heaven, Brother Bobby, it's going to be because they've been in relationship with Jesus Christ. Because the Word says old things. It doesn't matter what I used to do. Uh, it doesn't matter what I used to be involved in. Uh, it doesn't matter what my past used to be. Old things are passed away, right? Uh, and behold, all things are new. Uh, I am a new creature uh, in Christ Jesus. Uh, that's why being baptized uh, is so important. Uh, because when I go down uh, into that watery grave of baptism, I come up. A brand new creature. That's why it's important. You see, this is what I tell people. Don't say it's not true until you try it. Don't knock it until you've tasted of it. Because I'm here to tell you there's nothing like having the name of Jesus applied to your life. Who are you going to call on when you're about in the middle of an accident? Who are you calling on when your baby's burning up with a fever? Who are you calling on when you find yourself in a crisis? Then why wouldn't you want to take on his name in water baptism? Why wouldn't you want him a part of your life? If you want to call upon him, if you want to use his name, right? You know, this church has to be very careful because we've been blessed with law enforcement in this church. We're blessed, and I thank God for our law enforcement men that work our streets that go to this church. I pray God's blood over them each and every day. I pray protection upon them. Uh, but we're blessed because uh, sometimes you guys get pulled over and you'll drop a name. Oh, yeah, you do. Oh, yeah, you do. Uh-huh. Well, well, do you know Joey Carroll, that state? You, yeah, he, he goes to our church. Uh, Stanley, you, you know Stanley Cook, right? He's the one that pulls over everybody. He'll even pull over his grandmother and his mother. And he will ticket you if you are speeding. Or if you have an inspection sticker out, he will get you. But sometimes we've used those names, haven't we? Right? Hoping, right? It's called name dropping, right? Hoping that it will dig us out, correct, of a mess that we've got ourselves in because we drove faster than we were supposed to, correct? Anybody? Anybody drive a little faster than, than you're supposed to? You bunch of liars. I, just sit down because I've got another message. But we do. And we drop names when we see the blue lights, don't we? Let me tell you something. To not have Jesus applied to your life, it's just being a name dropper. Because you don't really know him as a father. Mm. You don't really know him as the son of God. You don't really know him as a Holy Ghost. How can you use the name Jesus when he's not really been revealed in your life? You see, you see, here's the thing that you've got to understand, and I'm done, I'm so done. When you make a big deal out of him, your heart automatically begins to operate and flows. Your eyes will do what's right. Your ears will do what's right. You won't look to the right. You won't look to the left, right? When you get in right relationship, when you get in right covenant with God, saints of God and guests of ours today, it's so vitally important to be in right relationship with Jesus Christ. Don't just make him a name dropper. 
Make him your father. Make him your son. Make him the Holy Ghost that lives on the inside of you. Allow his titles to become a part of you and allow Jesus to live inside of you. Because he said it, I didn't say it. These three are, I've never read where he said these three are three. But I did read where he said these three are one. I did read where hero Israel, the Lord our God is, right? But it's about a heart issue. Here's where it starts. Here's where it goes. So I'm asking you today, I want you to bow your head right now. Asking you, please don't play with the children or iPhones or anything right now. But just for the next minute, I want to ask you a serious question. How are the issues of life being processed in your heart? I don't want to be ugly, but just coming to church doesn't give you a free pass into heaven. Coming to church don't give you just a free ticket. It may help. Maybe a song or a word spoken can change that broken heart or whatever is the problem. But I want to ask you today, is your heart truly in line with the word of God? And as they begin to sing today, if you just need God to look at your heart, and if you just need to make sure that everything is okay. Why don't you step out of your pew right now and why don't you begin to walk down to the front of this building and say, God, I want to guard my heart at any cost. God, I want to make sure my heart 